Good morning. Hmm, I've been up. Actually, I woke up at 2.44. Didn't get out of bed right then, but that's when I looked at the clock the first time. <laughs> Rolled over and saw what time it was. Anyway, 2012, dealing with what is in front of us. I wanted so much to focus on spiritual things this morning as I went into the meditation room before 3 a.m. Yes, me too. I'd like to break away from all the legalities in which my life experience seems entrapped, <laughs> or I should probably say engulfed, although I wrote entrapped. Engulfed would be a better word I'm thinking now. In fact, I'll change it uh, so that I just remember engulfed. All right. Uh, whoops, I got to use the right keyboard. <laughs> engulfed. Okay, I just changed it. <laughs> That's the first time I think I've ever actually changed a blurb while I'm actually talking to you. <laughs> Even though I prayed for different folk as usual, when that thought would clear, the legal issues would come back to the fore. At first I resisted, wanting a break from all that stuff. Spirit reminded me that my job is to respond to whatever is in front of me. That is God's will for me right now. In fact, always, I didn't write that, but... <laughs> in fact, it is something we all need to consider. Our job is dealing with what is in front of us. As you might imagine, since Sunday especially, now it's not just been, I mean, it's not that I wasn't dealing with legal issues before that, but they took on a whole new significance following Sunday's experience. And I've been dealing with physical pain, which is something that's very rare for me. My physical body has been mostly pain-free in my life. Not that I never get aches and pains, but they're usually much, much easier to deal with than they were after Sunday's episode. And I continue to heal. Yet it's interesting that I had a bunch of phone calls yesterday afternoon. I think something like eight or something in a, in a two-hour period of time when I was attempting to just lay down and get a little bit of a nap and the phone kept ringing <laughs> but anyway the first one of those phone calls was from an individual who I know meant well and 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 the advice was good advice but he pointed out to me some of the things that I may not have done perfectly and I've never done anything in this legal her morass perfectly there's always something more that I could have said, could have done, another way that it could have been handled, always, inevitably. But I really began feeling down uh, after that telephone call. And it was funny because I noticed that each time that I would go back and try to lay down and then the phone would ring again, I'd lay there and... Uh, was the pain had increased. It was, I was not feeling so much physical pain, even in my lower back and stuff like that, prior to the phone call. But I realized how much my attitude has to do with what I'm feeling in my body. When I was feeling good about what I had done and what I had accomplished and where I was, my body was feeling good. As soon as I began to realize that I could have done some things better, my body began to hurt more, or at least the sensation of pain was greater. That was an awareness for me. I don't know how that, if that works with any of you, but I was really uh, acutely aware of the effect of my thoughts and the feelings that were going on in relation to those thoughts insofar as how my body was responding to sensations within itself. So I, I think that's a, a good revelation. But this whole idea of 
wanting to stay positive. And I and I do too. I do too. And and to me, the whole legal matrix is burdensome. It's odorous. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's horrendous. It's not something that I would choose ever choose to deal with. I would never choose to get involved in these in these legalities and and stuff like that. And yet, obviously, it's been placed in my life. It's been placed before me. And Spirit told me, I think it was in 2010, my job was to respond to whatever's in front of me, as I already said in the blurb. But that came, that's, a, that's two years ago that I got that message. That was the will of God for me. Whatever you're, Whatever's in front of you right now, deal with it. Respond to it. Handle that. That's your mission. Take care of that that's in front of you, whatever it is. And in my case, it's been the legal stuff with the first the lawsuit and then the bankruptcy and now this bogus charge of driving without a license when they've only ever caught me once and released me. And that was nine months ago. And uh, one of the calls yesterday was from a uh, a sheriff deputy, deputy who has resigned because he was tired of taking people's rights and being taught that that was what was expected of him as a deputy sheriff in, here, right here in Florida. And he said that they have, they have 120 days to bring, uh, to bring charges against someone uh, following a summons, and they didn't even issue me a summons. And the summons that came in the mail didn't indicate what the charges were. And I requested from the state, from the sheriff's department, clarification as to what the charges were. Just that I received a summon and then if I didn't respond within whatever it was, 20 days or, or whatever it was, 15 days, whatever, whatever it was, if I didn't respond, they would issue an arrest warrant. Well, I did respond. I responded in writing. They wanted me to respond by driving to the sheriff's department. Now, I didn't know what the charge was, that it was driving without a license. That's what the charge was. But I didn't know that till, till the arrest on Sunday. And by this time, they had never served proper notice. They, they broke all sorts of rules, as the deputy pointed out to me. They uh, violated right after right after right, even though one of the very first things I asked the sheriff in the very early part of his uh, appearance at my doorstep was... Are you working under your oath of office? Are you here on your oath of office? And when he said yes, I said, that means you're here to protect my rights. Well, he violated my rights, so he was, he was not working under his oath of office. And all of these things have been playing and playing and playing in my mind. And last night we watched uh, the part two of the Advanced Freedom Training with Fred and Nina. And it's interesting because someone sent me some information, one of my friends sent me some information about someone that claims Fred and Nina uh, are not up to any good and it's, it's, it appears on the page that likes to throw rocks at the Republic and anything that they can do to, to try to bring uh, disgrace or, or accusation or innuendo against the Republic, they're only too happy to do this. And I listened to two-thirds of it, which was a 15-minute uh, it was a 15 minute segment and I listened to the first 10 minutes of it but it, didn't, it doesn't gel with what I understand from people that have actually met Fred and Nina and it doesn't gel with the with what I feel when I listen to their message because they this this guy said that he was ripped off for money that he placed orders that he didn't receive the order in a timely fashion or he didn't receive the entire order that he ordered and, and uh, I, I listened to him but it didn't it didn't feel genuine and especially it didn't feel genuine because it's on that it's on that group that that whose whole total existence is to knock the republic uh for the united states of america that's that's their whole mission is to discredit that and and to me that mission is not a genuine mission it, it, only the de facto government would put people up to that thing only people that had an ulterior motive would waste that much energy trying to knock somebody else. And 
anyway, I, I'm bringing all this stuff out into the open because Fred and Nina teach, and it, it came out very strongly last night. Again, it's the third time I listened to part of that video because I listened to a half an hour of it before the meeting, and then, of course, the meeting, and I had listened to it previously. But we view everything through the Bill of Rights, which were the foundation, the protection, the shield to protect us from a criminal government. The Constitution exists to protect the people's rights, and it requires all office holders to swear allegiance to uphold and defend the Constitution. That is, to defend the people's rights protected and guaranteed by the Constitution. And the accusation was by this, this person that I listened to that these remedies don't work. I want to talk to you a little bit about remedies again. Yes, sometimes remedies don't work. In my particular case, none of my remedies have ever completely finished the job. Even when I thought it was finished in, in, May, in the end of May, the beginning of June 2010, by nine months later, it was coming back again. By spring of, of 2011, it was coming back again, even though it had laid dormant all that time. Uh, and, I didn't, and I thought I had won. I was proclaiming victory. I wasn't thinking about it. I was moving on with my life, and yet it came back. So even the remedies that I've used, when they want to open up controversy again, they bring things back in. They bring things back in. And they try to get you to go down to their level. And I keep trying, and I've been trying for a long time, to get it above the line. What's above, above the line? It means looking at it from the Bill of Rights, from, from the law of the land, which is the Constitution to approach everything from that perspective, from that position. What the government tries to get you to do is to go below the line to the administrative courts where the judges can do whatever they please and to get you to play in that ballpark, which is why they, they want you to get a lawyer because that's, that's where lawyers play. So all the attorneys, they don't know enough to get above the line. And even some of my work with some of the people that are trying to help me, from my perspective, are trying to get me to play in the ball game down below the line. And it's so frustrating for me because I want to play from these are my rights. These are my rights and they have been violated. What are you going to do about it? You have sworn an oath of office to uphold and defend the Constitution, which protects me. Why aren't you protecting me? Why didn't that sheriff protect me when I claimed my rights, and I continued to claim my rights all through the process. But as it was pointed out to me, I did what I was told. Yes, I did what I was told because I, I was under threat. I was under coercion. I had just been beaten up. And I'm, I, I was told I'm not supposed to do what they tell me to do. I'm supposed to res resist. Well, I tried to pull away from an assault, what to me still is an assault. It was, it was entering my, pro it was violating many of my rights, but it was an assault. And I didn't want to get assaulted again by these people in the prison wearing guns. But he said, you should not have submitted to fingerprinting and stuff like that. And, I, and it's like a catch-22. I mean, I signed everything, all rights reserved. I preserved the fact that my family name is Van Dyke. But that's not who I am. I mean, I, I made the distinction that I don't go by what they consider the last name. It's a family name. That's common law rhetoric. That's free man, that's free man speak, if you will. So I have to deal with these things. And all of us in our world have to deal with what is in front of us. And to me, now this may not be your mission, it may not be where you're planted, but to me the most important aspect going on in this world is the legal aspect to bring the criminals that have usurped the authority of the people and taken their rights 
to correct that situation, to redress the grief, the grievances that we have against our leaders. That's the single most important thing going on in the world today. Until that is remedied, we cannot bring peace on earth. There will not be justice. There will not be uh, a jubilee. There will not be peace on earth at all. There cannot be. The love and the love and everything will continue to be attacked by the people that that hold the guns and and are controlled by the money that will continue to happen that way and our single biggest most important job is to recognize how the matrix really is and to do everything within our individual power and collective power to change it that's our job that's our job and that is what the awakening is all about in 2011, 2012, at this time that we're living in. It's about reclaiming our power by reclaiming our natural rights, by getting our birthright back again. We've squandered it. It's time that we take it back. Anyway, these are my thoughts for today. And it is spiritual. Whether I, whether I like to be there or not, it's all spiritual. I leave you with these thoughts, as I just said. Namaste and bless you.